Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. You know, anytime that you have something that steals your joy, whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, first of all, let me welcome you to the mental health. As y'all can probably see, it's very early in the morning. I decided to get up and make this video before I took the dogs out. And um, I just want y'all to hear me ask the majority of these people that's listening to me. What in the hell made some of these fools vote for Donald Trump? What's y'all excuse now? I mean, you clearly have a narcissistic person, a uh, personality disorder person, up in office, running amok, an actual sicko who has the colds. You know, that's what disturbs me more than anything about, I mean, even more than the shutdown, more than his irresponsibility and the way he even handled the trip that Nancy Pelosi, that he thought that he was um, throwing a, a wrench in when he said that she had to take a commercial flight. The fact that he exposed that information lets you know that this guy is not presidential material. Whoever voted for him is a downright fool. In my opinion, you're a damn fool. Matter of fact, I don't care who you are. You're a damn fool. Because common sense should tell you how we go, America goes. America is supposed to be, you. it's supposed to be United States of America. This guy has temper tantrums and shuts down the government. And y'all act like it ain't a damn thing y'all can do about it. You even voted a fucking crazy man in office. And we ain't nothing we can do but sit back and watch this craziness? That's all that can happen? You gotta be freaking kidding me. This guy needs to go. He's got the colds, y'all. He's got the freaking colds. This dude is crazy. How many of y'all don't even see it? He's nuts. Because anytime you shape shift the way he does. I know plenty of people. But we'll start with Claudia Jordan, who was a black woman, who was on his apprentice show, who said that Donald Trump wasn't acting like this before. So he's a straight hypocrite, first of all. He's pandering to whoever is worth pandering to. So you don't have anything authentic. You got a liar. Well, y'all don't even care about that. The non-stop of lies that's been going on since this man got in office is incredible. But you know what? I'm going to stop there. I'm going to let Bill Maher, y'all know him. A lot of people, y'all fell out with him a couple months ago. But um, he was on um, Harbaugh. And um, I, I, I want to just play his comments. That's That'll be good enough. You're coming back, and that's great. In the time oh, you've been away you. and watching this this massacre of democracy, this president has been asked whether he's a Russian agent. Now, you have to go back to the 1940s, Alger Hiss, you know, the roads of Russia. I mean, the idea that a president of the United States is accused by the paper of record of weakened, working for the bad guys. It's about time. I've been using the word treason and traitor. For the whole time he's been in office, and every guest I've had on the show has been saying I was an alarmist and I was overstating the case. I don't hear that anymore. I hear those words used a lot more. I mean, that's what it is. What is it when you plainly are with the people who are not us? Didn't we see that in Helsinki? Uh, plainly, he was saying, uh, I given the choice, I go with President Putin. President Putin says he didn't do it. I don't know why he would. Can you imagine if Bush after 9-11 had stood on the rubble with the bullhorn and said, well, Bin Laden says he didn't do it. I don't know why he would have. That's what defense attorneys do. 
They defend yeah. their defenders. So, and what do you make? What do you make of the fact that if you look at this as a, just a citizen out there, they said the New York Times said the FBI, a bunch of bureaucrats, really, not Democrats, investigated him because they thought his behavior matched that of an agent. He was doing things one after another, including firing Comey, that seemed to be in the interest of one party, the Russians and Putin. Is there anything in between between guilty as charged and innocent? Because some people have to say, well, maybe there was some unwitting helping of the Russians. I don't understand that theory. Yours? No, I, I think what you have to understand about him is that he is this clinical narcissist. I think every article about Donald Trump should begin. President Trump, who suffers from being a clinical narcissist. Thank you. And then go on with the story. Thank you. Because... Thank you. There is no difference in his mind, Thank his you. sick mind, between doing what is right for him and doing what is right for the country. He doesn't, I don't think he thinks in terms of whether he's betraying anybody. There is no betraying. There is only what is right and good for Donald Trump. So I don't know how we get out of this except by getting him out of office. I mean, I wasn't necessarily for impeachment until recently, but I think you have to go ahead and do it. I know it's pretty hard to convict. But if you don't do it with him, where is the bar? And what, what sort of damage is he going to do for the, for the next two years that he is there in this office? Um, I think the question for everybody is, who, whose side are you on? Are you on the FBI side? Huh? I mean, he's got Republicans now attacking the FBI and all our institutions. Are you with Trump? This one man, this one sick man, or are you with the FBI? Are you with the rule of law? Are you with Donald Trump? Are you with judges? Are you with everything that we basically have built our country on? Or are you going to throw it all the way to this one guy? I, I want to know what the Republicans, those enablers, the Lindsey Grahams are thinking. Why are you lying to cover up for this guy? And you don't even know what you're lying to cover up. Well, that's a question. If you just step back. 101 yeah. contacts between the Trump people going into the presidency, 101 contacts with the Russians. I spent my life with pretty much getting around. I haven't met many Russians, maybe one or two by accident. There's all these hundreds of Russians, and I got nothing against people in Russia. But how many contacts can you have without somebody saying, what's up? Even the Republicans. Yes, and, and and this is just what we know what he does plainly, what he does in public, what he does in front of the cameras. I mean, his defense seems to be, I was only giving orders. I, what we're going to find out in the Mueller report, I have no idea, but it's going to be more of the same. It's going to be more of, look, it's not that complicated. If at some point he couldn't borrow money from anybody else, so he got it from the Russians, cut to the hookers in the hotel room. I mean, yeah. that's what this whole thing is about. He is into them. He, he I don't know what whether it was winning or unwitting, as I say, when you're a narcissist like him, it doesn't really matter. He doesn't think that far ahead. He just thinks, he doesn't think, he just says, this is yeah. what I wish people would start un understanding. He just says at any given moment what he wishes the reality was. I told, well, here's uh, a new I, I made Kim give up his one. Yeah. Ted, Ted, Ted Cobble today in the Washington Post read a beautifully written article saying, watch out when this guy's out of office, whether the voters kick him out in 2020 or the Mueller report leads him to be impeached and convicted. Either way, he's going to be out there. I just looked at his latest numbers. Trump's up at 41. Thirty three percent of those behind him. That's a third of the country is strongly behind him. Do you think he's going to go? You've suggested he may not leave. He may not leave. <laughs> he may not leave. What? He may not leave. Yes, I've always said that. <laughs> He's going to go when he wants to go. I, I don't think, he was saying this in the last election, that it's rigged, except that he won, and then it wasn't rigged. But if he loses, he's already planted that seed with his people, that the whole thing is rigged, that they're all like, against him. You know, if you can't trust the FBI and the Justice Department and the rule of law and the judges, well, then obviously an election can be faked. Well, really you can't, so right? if everything is fake news and everything is rigged, when he loses the election, they're not going to accept that. That's what he knows. He has that army in the street. That's what dictators want more than anything else. They don't care about the rule of law. They care about the street. The gutter had come to power, some historian said about Hitler. That's what this is. Let's talk about permanent damage. You know, I mean, you and I read the papers. We keep up with countries that... 
it's it, like the Congo, what's going on in Zimbabwe, poor countries that have just begun experimenting democracy. They got tribal differences. And every time a guy loses the next over there, they claim it was stolen. Every time they win, they try to arrest the guy they beat. It's like Trump is like that. Lock her up was his, his, what he's, uh, what do you call it? What is, his, his jingle. His jingle for the last couple of years. I mean, arrest Hillary Clinton as a joke. And when he doesn't like something, as you say, if he had lost the election in the Electoral College, he would have said it was stolen. He's teaching a good portion of the American people not to trust any objective fact, including numbers in an election. Well, that's how all dictators do it. They have to destroy truth first because if people read the paper, if people knew what was going on, uh, then obviously they would be upset, but they don't. And they especially don't hear it inside the Fox News bubble. Yeah. So what you have is someone who can tell you what the truth is. They believe him more than they believe what they read in the New York Times because they don't read the New York Times. So you're left with this situation where there is no truth, where you're just going to pick sides, and that's what we have. That's why we have this terrible by lack of bipartisanship. Uh, forget about getting anything done in the country. Uh, we're just like, sort of fighting for our life now as a country. What do you make of this uh, Stephen King thing today? I'm not talking about the novelist, the guy who writes the scary stories. This guy from Iowa, finally, he's been pushing the envelope for years, like Don Imus used to do, and now he's doing it. They finally today passed a resolution in the U.S. Congress saying, this is awful, we don't believe in white supremacy. They're making it official. I, I mean, look where the bar is, Chris. <laughs> that we're cheering the Republicans because they say we don't believe in white supremacy. Uh, this is how far down we've gone. Uh, th this is where they draw the line. I'm glad they drew the line somewhere because... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. Is this ugly? It's ugly. And all I'm trying to say is what are we going to do with Donald J. Trump? He's got the codes, y'all. This food has got the codes. See you in the next video.